morning. morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church on this fifth Sunday in Lent as we draw closer and closer to the cross. Our gospel this morning will tell us a story of the drama mounting just a few days before Jesus gets to the cross. And it presents all kinds of fascinating, even fantastical circumstances, but we will spend our time looking at an often overlooked detail and what that might mean for us. For now, let's take time to prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude. Please rise in body or in spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have have not not loved loved you you with our our whole heart. heart. We We have have not loved loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the the sake of your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, Christ, have have mercy mercy on us. Forgive Forgive us, renew us, us, and lead us, us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O God, God, with with steadfast steadfast love, you draw draw us to yourself, and in mercy receive receive our prayers. Strengthen Strengthen us to bring bring forth forth the fruits of the Spirit, Spirit, that through life and and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after these days, says the Lord. 
I will put my law within them and will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. reading from Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, 
It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Maker and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Sometimes the best place to start a sermon is where the scripture doesn't make sense. Did you catch the line in the gospel where, where it makes no sense at all? You might say it was an enigma. See what I did there? They, they played the enigma variations. There's this voice from heaven, but we've seen that before at Jesus' baptism. And then there's this unbelievable teaching from Jesus about eternal life, but that's an old record by now, by the time we get to the 12th chapter of John. And yes, there's Jesus talking about all of this happening for his followers' sake, but again, by John chapter 12, just before the Last Supper, and at this point in our Lenten journey, that's nothing new. So which verse doesn't make sense in our gospel? Did you catch it? I'll tell you which one, but then you got to tell me why. Now among those, the very first verse, verse 20, now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. Why doesn't that make sense? Because it was a Jewish festival. Which festival? Passover, right? In the earlier part of John chapter 12, Palm Sunday has just happened, right? Then we get our story. So which city are they in? Jerusalem. They are in Jerusalem at the Jewish temple for Passover. Why would Greeks go to Jerusalem for the Jewish festival of Passover and even be in the temple? They have their own temples to worship gods and make sacrifices to gods like uh, Athena, Apollo, all of those I'll call Greek mythology. So what were these Greeks doing at the Jewish temple, of all Jewish temples in Jerusalem, to worship the God of Israel, someone they didn't claim to believe in, for the festival of Passover? What? They tell us, they say, we want to see Jesus, right? The ruckus is out. The secret is out. In John chapter 11, Jesus has done his last miracle. He raised Lazarus from the dead. John, the beginning of John 12, Palm Sunday, and now here we are. So they want to see Jesus, but they pick out the disciples that seem to be Greek. Philip, very Greek name. Andrew, very Greek name. They don't go to Peter or Simon with Hebrew names. They go to Philip and Andrew, people like them. So Philip tells Andrew and Andrew tells Jesus. So they don't do it alone. They have each other. But don't you wonder how that reaction went of Philip and Andrew? How they sounded, what they thought about it? Were they scared or excited? Did they feel important that they were being asked to show people Jesus? Or were they acting like bouncers or security at a nightclub, like, hey, Jesus, these two want in. All right, let them in, front of the line. I mean, we don't know how Philip and Andrew handle it, right? 
but we know that they do. They are asked by the Greeks, who don't seem to belong at this festival, to see Jesus, and they make it happen. Philip and Andrew don't care that they are Greeks, that they have shown up to celebrate a festival that isn't theirs, and it, they would have known because of the rituals around Passover. They would have known who is Hebrew or, or Jewish and who wasn't. They don't care about that. They show the Greeks Jesus. They make it happen. They hear the curiosity and they show them Jesus. No questions asked. <coughs> now, if someone were to politely request or ask us to see Jesus, what would we do? What would we show them? If someone who had never been in a church, who doesn't ever doesn't claim Christianity as their culture, walked in to one of our festivals. Every Sunday is a little Easter, right? So walked into one of our festivals. Show me Jesus. What, do you, what would we do? I guess we could point them to the cross. Okay. But then we have to tell them the whole story of the cross. Okay. A Bible, that's kind of loaded. Most of us struggle with scripture. The communion elements, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, Christ given and shed for us, but that's a lot to take in in your mind if you tell someone, no, this is the body and blood. Maybe we demonstrate loving our neighbor, right, acts of service. I'm sure you have ideas too, but I don't think sh just showing things gets the whole point across. And Jesus seems to know this in the gospel as well. The Greeks can now see Jesus, and what does he do? He launches into some teaching that is at first very easy to understand. You don't have to be Jewish to understand a metaphor of grain falling on, a grain of wheat falling on the earth and it needs to die in order for it to bear fruit. Anyone who's ever farmed, which was almost everyone in that culture, would have known that. No rocket science there. But then he goes into these unbelievable parts about eternal life and being glorified, and then kind of awful things about loving life but losing it, hating life but gaining it. The, the, he's putting all these opposites together, let alone the ideas and the concepts being really far out there. So Jesus has told them, and right after this, he's going to show them again. This is Jesus' last public teaching. His last appearance as a living, breathing person. After this, in chapter 13, does anyone happen to know what happens in John 13? We read it every year on the same day every year. He's having a dinner party with his friends. He's having supper, you might say. One might even call it the last supper. And we know what happens from there. A night that starts beautifully turns horrifically sour. Which means that the next time Jesus makes a public appearance, he will be naked, his body will be beaten, bruised, and bleeding as he dangles from a cross. These are his parting words. Jesus is about to show these Greeks and all of these people gathered at the temple what he's been talking about, what he means about the Son of Man being lifted up, what he means about death leading to life. He has done the telling. And now comes the showing. It's backwards from that beloved day of grade school, show and tell. You know the day I'm talking about, right? Everyone got to bring something to school, and then they could share it by showing it and then telling people about it. Here, 
Jesus tells and then shows. But one thing remains the same. Those two words always go together. It's not show or tell, tell or show. It is always and forever and. These two action verbs are practically married to each other, two sides of the same coin, nearly impossible to do one without the other. So what is your show and tell when it comes to Jesus? Maybe you have a tell and show, fine. But either way, what do you use to do both, to show and to tell? It's much too easy, and we're all prone to following into the or world, show or tell about Jesus. Doing both, it can sound like a lot, maybe even overwhelming. I mean, look, even Philip and Andrew at least have each other to get the job done. But that's the thing. It's a community that does the showing and telling. I don't know if you knew this, but when visitors come, they receive like a welcome gift. Okay. And it is a, um, some information about who we are and what we do, but it is a mug, right? With our logo and our contact information on it. Um, so I could choose any object to show and tell about Jesus, but today I chose this one. I didn't just do it, I just forgot to bring the mug up here before I read the sermon, to be clear. But watch, watch what happens when the community shows and tells about this mug. What is something you would put in this mug? You can shout it out. Coffee. Because our life here, a central pillar of Christian community is fellowship. And we gather around beverages, right? Often warm. What else could you put in this mug or would you put in this mug? Irish coffee, because we like to stay festive and have fun too. And we're not teetotalers. Thank you for that example. Yes. What else? Pencils? Spoken like a teacher, pencils. Yeah, because we also believe in scripture study, right? That is our lifelong journey. We're never done understanding scripture. We continue to write things down, ask questions. What else? Toothbrushes in a mug, right. Because our lives are dependent on water, as are our spiritual lives, right? Through baptism. What else? Change. What is extra to us could be vital to someone else, just to throw our coins in here, right? And perhaps we give that away, or we save it up and use it for something useful. We understand the responsibility of being, of having gifts and having abundance. Anything else? A flower? Yeah, I, I start a lot of the plants that I grow in, I have too many mugs at my house, so I start them in here, right? It can be the beginning of, of growth of that grain dying right, and becoming new life. Not to sound like a lush, but you could put wine in there. Not that I drink wine out of a mug, but if we're staying with Christian community, you could put wine in a mug for communion purposes only, and then share in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, right? Am I missing anything or any other responses you're, you're burning to tell me? Water? Yeah, yeah, just like putting toothbrush or anything that we use for, for daily sustenance, right? This vital life source. And we also remember that uh, our eternal life began at baptism um, and that we were bestowed God's covenant through water and God's word and the Holy Spirit. It's the same object. It is the same show. 
but we all have different tells. Kind of like that symbol up there. So maybe what we are invited to do is to show and tell the body of Christ, not the one that is now absent from that cross, not the one that is bloodied and bruised, but this one, this body of Christ, this Christian community that is perfectly flawed and flawed perfectly, this community where we show up for each other and for our neighbors, this part of the body of Christ that cannot function without its many members and parts and each other. This part of the body of Christ that also knows what it is to be hurt and pained. It knows what it is to forgive and be forgiven, to mend relationship and create relationship that is always being made new. Because here's the thing, in our, in our life and times, Christian community is the closest thing to what Jesus looks like today. Christian community, the body of Christ, is the closest thing to what Jesus looks like today. So, we are about to have all kinds of festivals and sacred days that will catch the attention of other people. People who particularly don't celebrate them. They become curious. What's that about? What's that about? Why do you do this? The world might not have as clear of a request as the Greeks did, but our world asks to see Jesus when it cries out for mercy, for kindness, compassion, grace, peace, love, and every other blessed thing that Christian community provides and is constantly forging. So when the world asks for those things, when the world asks to see Jesus, Show and tell them about this living, breathing, about to be resurrected body of Christ using whatever object you might have around. Amen.
with the church of God in every place and in every time, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the grace, the means of grace around which, which you gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O God. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill, especially the Wetzel family, Lily, Jan, Brandon and Bobby, Vincent, Drew, Louise, Tina, Bob, Patty, Ann, Romeo, Brian, Lois, Kyle, Jean, Mike and Karen, Bob, Dave, Jackie, Bob, Katie. Hear us, O oh God. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspire us. Like St. Patrick, grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O oh God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share with one another a sign of God's peace.
please rise in body or in spirit. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then, again after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and all places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to taste and see that the Lord is good.
Now may the body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right. Um, I don't have an announcement sheet. Help me. Uh, this Wednesday, we are hosting um, the final Lenten lunch in our ministerium. So please, if you are able to come and join, thank you to um, Trish Young and Pat Irwin for providing food. Our greatest needs right now are dessert. If you can make a dessert and bring it, please let um, one of us know ASAP and also set up and clean up. So I will be coming, I have to go out of town for synod work, I will be coming back into town that morning. So if you can be here around 9.30 or 10 to help uh, set up tables and chairs, that would be um, much needed. Immediately following that lunch and after we uh, clean up, we will be having our monthly Bible study on Mary Magdalene. And we are hoping that um, perhaps other folks from the other congregations who will be joining us for lunch will also be interested in joining us for that as well. So please, if possible, let's have a good showing from Grace. Um, next Sunday, we will uh, begin Holy Week. We will um, begin with the triumphal entry into Jerusalem and procession of the palms and also the reading of the Passion. The rest of the Holy Week schedule uh, should be in your bulletin. I do want to highlight on Wednesday of Holy Week, we have uh, cultivated a relationship with Fair Acres Retirement Center in Media, Lima, that vicinity. And so we will be doing a brief service there. Uh, the service itself is 20 to 30 minutes, but I try to get there between 2 and 2.15 to visit with the residents. It is a dementia unit. Um, and folks who are often, they don't have a lot of family. So um, please come and just be a communal support and there to worship with these folks on Wednesday of Holy Week. Thursday evening, wine and cheese at 6. Um, Monday, Thursday service at 7. And I'll draw your attention to Good Friday. We will not be having an evening service on Good Friday. We will have one service at noon on Good Friday. We are hosting the Marple Newtown Clergy Association Good Friday service. We will do our traditional Good Friday service at noon instead of seven. Am I missing anything for the next two weeks? Then of course we get into Easter breakfast and Easter Sunday here in two weeks. Um, did I cover all my bases? I think so. Oh, you might have seen in the Wednesday email, the Girl Scouts are having a fundraiser here. <coughs> Excuse me. They are collecting <coughs> non-perishable items for their spaghetti dinner, those went in the Wednesday email because Jeanette's on vacation. They probably didn't make it in to these announcements, so we'll have those printed for you next week. But also look in the Wednesday email for things like pasta sauce, um, spaghetti itself, salad dressing. Um, the list will be printed next week. So I think that's everything. We're just trying to donate some items to support their cause to go on a trip to Niagara Falls. All right. And now I really think that's everything. So. Uh, any other announcements from the community? Any sharing of sorrows, thanksgivings, or concerns? All right. Yeah. I'm so sorry. We thank uh, Tasia, right, for being here with us. It's always a treat to have her. Thank you, Trish, for making me not look <laughs> ignorant. <laughs> um, Always, always a gift. You have been um, a treasure to us. And thank you to John, as always, for planning such meaningful music. Uh, please rise in body or in spirit to receive the blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
build your faith. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Amen.